in uh, full disclosure, the last video where I was sitting in the hot tub talking about exciting news to share with you next video, I'd already gotten the vehicle. So um, I put on a few miles and uh, I've really been enjoying myself the last few days. Wait till the end of the video because I'm going to talk about some things, uh, kind of explain some of the really neat plans for the future and what's going to happen here on the channel and how I'm going to use my new vehicle. But without further delay, I want to introduce you all to Tater Tot. I have, I have named my car Tater Tot here. A 2014 smart car, not the electric drive. This is a uh, 2014 gas model. It's got a three cylinder, one liter gas engine that gets 42 to 44 miles per gallon in her. Let's check her out. This is actually just the Smart Car 42 base model. This is not the Pure or the Passion model. Got a few upgrades. Uh, just got some wheel covers on there right now, but I stopped into Modified Auto and got 20% tint all around here. That looks awesome. Once we get inside, I'll show you some of the things. This is just a one owner car. I'm only the second owner of Tater Tot. And, um, they got the base model and made some factory upgrades upon delivery. This thing is clean, y'all. These are on Marketplace all over the place. And Craigslist, you can pick these up right in the two to $3,000 range. And I got the best one that was for sale this time of year. Ready for this? Take a look, guys. It is called the 4-2 because it is for two people. There is only two front seats. There are no back seats. And believe it or not, it is incredibly spacious. You can see all the leather and everything going on here. That's not leather, but there is, it just looks super, super clean. I'm adding my GoPros right now so we can try those out. Just a super clean car. And look at the little space back here. In fact, we'll, we'll come back to this in just a second. Let's look back here first. We got a smart key fob here with lock, unlock, panic, and here's your trunk button. Hold that one down, and we can open up this guy right here. Look at all that grocery space right there. Also, you can tap either one of these back here to pop down the tailgate. And yes, I called it an actual tailgate because it is a tailgate that holds 250 pounds. Grab your cooler, y'all. Throw it in there. Sit down on your tailgate in your smart car, and look at this beautiful view of the water. Just awesome right the cool feature about the tailgate is that it's got a little hidden compartment of sorts fit beer or soda or jumper cables or whatever you need in there and and really lots of space back here look at all the grocery space in here i can reach my arm all the way to the seats right there lots and lots of space i've got my seat almost all the way up right now and i just pulled the passenger back but that goes way back also everybody out there has got a lot of nasty things to say about the smart car i've had it three days now and and already i'm getting like the most popular thing people say to me is oh that's so unsafe eric what are you gonna do if a semi crashes into you head on the same thing that would happen if you're in a honda civic or a Toyota, uh, what, what, what do you mean? Uh, head on with a semi? <laughs> Believe it or not, these smart cars are incredibly safe. They have a four star safety crash feature. And this whole thing, there's a lot of plastic on the car, but this steel frame that goes through here, there's some uh, tests that, that show that it's actually a very, very safe car. Contrary to what, it doesn't matter. You've already made up your mind, so go ahead and spread your hate. I don't really care. It is a very safe car, and I don't care who you hit head on at 60 mile an hour in the freeway, you're not gonna survive. So come on, guys. Also take into consideration the fact that I'm coming from riding a motorcycle as my daily driver outside my RV. I, I'm used to getting out of people's blind spots and making sure that I'm seen, and so I'm gonna be extra safe in this thing. Let's uh, climb inside. Because again, I've got my seat almost all the way forward because I'm kind of a short guy and I need to reach the pedals. Honestly, as long as you don't like look behind you, you know, just, just like this, it's like riding in a normal car, really. It feels like it. And this seat right here, Hopefully Jax is gonna be able to sit here and be happy on these short little RV trips that we take. Everything is really clean. There's a, a cloche dashboard up here. Here is the uh, smart key. And as you'll notice, there's nowhere to put it. One of the very few cars where you put the key right there. And there's your, I guess we'll call it an automatic. Let's go ahead and start this guy up though. It's not really an automatic, it's a manual. 
uh, go up here. See, we got all our lights. Start it up like that. I know I'm not wearing my seatbelt. Turn the parking brake off. You can see there's no check engine lights or anything. We are, I don't know if you can read that, 19,000. 947 miles. That's right, under 20,000 miles for a 2014 model. And there is some stuff that is certainly new for me. Air conditioning in a car, although I have it in the RV, there is air conditioning in this car. There is also heated seats. Driver and passenger heated seats. And Jax has already tested this out right there and he loves it. I have never had any vehicle with heated seats, so that's pretty cool. They have also upgraded the, the stereo here, so that's good that it's already got the dash kit in case I can put in what I want for navigation and everything. I got my magnetic post here. There's an open glove box there. And I'm just now uh, kind of testing out my, my angles here for the GoPro so I can vlog while I'm driving in the car here. I'm gonna turn the car back off here. Let's talk about the transmission because this car is manufactured by Mercedes-Benz. It's a German Mercedes-Benz car. However, it's their other brand, their smart car. But yeah, this has got a Mercedes-Benz all craftsmanship in it. However, it is the transmission is a little strange and unique in that it is a manual transmission that is automatic. A manual transmission that's semi-automatic so what does that mean exactly let me start it back up here all right i started it back up here what does that mean exactly well just like an automatic transmission we can go into drive all the way down and the d is lit right there and it's going to drive except it's going to feel like you are in a manual transmission car because there's no clutch down here it's just gas and brake however when you hit the gas and start moving you're physically going to feel it switch gears so you're in first the car physically is shifting like a manual transmission automatically for you as you're driving and it looks funny if you're near a smart car because like if i'm going to shift i'm going to do it real quick and you're not going to see that jerkiness but because as a driver you don't know when the auto, the manual transmission is going to shift it always catches me off guard and you'll see me go like that or like that and then the whole car kind of rocks back and forth a little bit it's a it's a strange sensation luckily if you don't like that you can put it into full manual you just won't have a floor clutch and how you do that is quite simple you just tack it over changes to the plus sign we're in first gear as you're going if you want to go into second gear you just there's second there's third want to go back down to first it's it's basically a straight manual transmission without pushing in the clutch with your left foot or you can put it back into automatic I think it's all about preference and what you kind of prefer. I'm, I've been pretty much half and half. Most of the time, I would say it's probably just in the automatic manual, but from time to time, I like to take control, especially if I'm filming or gonna be talking on a camera, I'd like to be able to know when to anticipate the changing of gears and stuff. So far, it is a great little car. Again, for $3,000, I mean, you just can't beat that. And these cars get a ton of flack. I mean, everybody's got something funny or nasty or just something hateful to say about a smart car. And the thing is, I do not care anymore, guys. It is so, it's going to be so much better for me, okay? Complete cl climate control. Now we're going to get into some of the reasons why I think this is going to be a car that I might tow behind the RV instead of taking the motorcycle. Yeah, you heard it. A lot of details still to work out, but but hear me out, okay? My my YouTube channel, Riding the Motorcycle, I'm starting to get to that age where, you know, semis don't see me and people are cutting me off and I almost die every single time I go out to make more videos for you guys on the motorcycle. You know, it's constantly either raining or in the summertime it's 110 degrees, so it's really uncomfortable to take the motorcycle and everybody's complaining because I wear a t-shirt and shorts even though it's 100 degrees is you know and so I, I definitely feel that having a climate controlled vehicle where I can lock up my belongings most importantly bring jacks and you guys know I'm going to I'm gonna bring jacks on these little out of the RV excursions around the country so heat air conditioning much 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 safer than a motorcycle I won't get into it being safe because, like I said, most people have already made up their mind. It is a dorky looking car. It gets lots of attention. So we got to slap a Nomadic Fanatic sticker on there. I already did. Looking good there. And maybe later on a little Nomadic Fanatic decal black on the side. The other thing is, hope, well, I don't have the RV right this second, but 
the color scheme matches Miranda, which is kind of funny. Miranda's white with gray and black stripes. Like literally, how cool would this look towed behind the RV, four wheels down? Uh, the smart car is a, is a very popular car to tow that way. You go into the manual and there's a seven step procedure once you put the key in. Like just say you're all hooked up with your blue ox and connected to an RV. There's a sequence of stuff you gotta do including disconnecting the battery. You gotta put in a disconnect battery thing and then put it into neutral so that it doesn't hurt the transmission. And then you can easily tow this with no speed limitations or mileage limitations. And smart car is increasingly more popular for RVers. Of course, Jeep is what everybody does. And then we went into that whole geo tracker thing for a little bit. And now it looks like a lot of people are switching to smart cars. Remember, uh, Gone with the Winds travel with the smart car behind their RV for a little bit too. And, oh, one last thing. There's no engine up here. This is a rear engine car. The rear engine, it's uh, under here. So if you wanna check your oil, and everything you unlatch that guy right there and that's how you do most engine stuff although the coolant's still in the front and your window washer fluid and your brake brake fluid and all that but the engine's right there which means we're it's a rear wheel drive car which is kind of neat kind of kind of unique but again once you go through the correct procedures and look at your manual because it tells you exactly those seven or eight steps you got to do to be able to flat tow it in neutral behind an rv so you're hearing it from me now that there's a possibility that yeah uh, this gets towed behind Miranda. Tater Tot might be coming across the country with me. However, here is the little snag with that whole idea. I'm having a hard time finding the components. The um, base plate that is sold through Blue Ox is out of stock. And I ordered it three different times, once through e-trailer, once through Blue Ox directly, and then once through Amazon. And all three times they got back to me and said, nope, it doesn't exist. We stopped manufacturing back in March for COVID and there aren't any in the world. <laughs> so I can get pretty much all the components except the base plate that goes into it. So I've been talking with Jason from J Camping with the Kellys and I'm gonna start looking at some used or wrecked smart cars that were maybe towed behind an RV in a previous life where I could get the base plate from the front, the piece that's connected to the frame that, that comes through here. That's the only, otherwise, um, if I can't get that because of COVID, I may have to put off that plans and take the motorcycle with me anyway and store the car here in Illinois. I don't wanna do that, but how do I always mention to bring up COVID virus stuff in every single video? How about because, seriously, it affects everyone's life right now. And I don't like those people who are purposely pretending like it doesn't, like it's not there and it's not affecting people. It is ruining businesses and families. It is, it is killing people. It, 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 it's a real thing and it, and it affects us all. So yeah, from time to time, I do bring up the virus and I do talk about how that, how everything's going. Illinois has, oh my gosh. The governor's not even here. He's out of state right now in his own state where he says, you're not allowed to work unless you're an essential worker. So nobody can work unless you work at Walmart or a pharmacy. A lot of people breaking that rule. You can see what a menace to society I am out here by myself. Uh, we are still allowed to recreate and everything. So the parks haven't reclosed like they did back in March and April. But anyway, enough about that. Well, no, not quite enough about that. See here, here's the main thing is that because all the restaurants reclosed, the only way you can get food around here is if you have a car that's under seven foot in height. And it, you can't be on a motorcycle, you can't be on foot because you can't go inside and order. You have to be in a car in order to get food around here. We got the toilet paper shortage. I haven't seen toilet paper in two weeks. I'm not out, I just want to mention that. However, toilet paper's all gone. Cleaning supplies are all gone from Walmart. I don't know if it's just Illinois that's like that because I've, oh, I've only been here. We, we, remember, we, we got reclosed down here in the, statewide, even in, even in the cities that haven't had a single case, completely shut down, out of toilet paper and every essential we might need. <laughs> 10 months later, man, holy cow. So I need the car at least here at the house for surviving just for doing basic things. But also we're gonna go on some adventures. And that's the big news is for the rest of this month until after Christmas, Jackson and I are gonna take the car out safely and legally and uh, go explore some new stuff around here. That's the plan. I should say that's that's the immediate plan, okay? I just I just want to shoot this video out real. I, you know, I could have been more creative with this, but tater tot 
needed to be shown to the channel and I'm really excited. I'm sure I'm forgetting some stuff. We'll talk about it later this week as I get some things done. Because all I've done is put wheel covers on, tinted the windows and change the oil. It's just good to go. So thanks for watching. We'll get back to something more interesting in the next video. And hopefully this changes the channel for the good. Thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.